Welcome to the latest version of Curves to Mesh. This is a significant update which allows you to have a preview mode to interactively work with the mesh as it is created and the ability to craft more sophisticated objects such as cars, machine parts and even heads. This video is intended to help you get started using this Blender add-on. To install the add-on in Blender 2.8, go to the Edit menu and select Preferences. Under the Add-ons section, it is first advised to search for extra objects to install additional curve objects for you to use. Make sure the checkbox is checked for Add Curve Extra Objects. Then, click the Install button at the top. This will open a file dialog where you should navigate to where you have downloaded the Curves to Mesh zip file. This file should not be unzipped. Then, click the Install Add-on from File button. Next, search for the name Curves to Mesh in the search bar. You should see the add-on entry under Add Mesh Curves to Mesh. Check the checkbox for this entry. Let us know if you have any problems. The options that appear under the entry allow you to change the colours of the preview mode as well as change the keyboard shortcuts relating to this tool. This is a demonstration of its first use, creating surfaces. This tool is set up to work with Bezier curves. You will need to make sure you select this type of curve before starting. Zoom into the curve that has been created. Bezier curves have control points which when moved change the shape of the curve. Once you have your initial Bezier curve, from this you can duplicate it, giving yourself a total of four arranged in a square. Then press the N key if you do not have the properties panel open. There will be a tab at the right hand side labelled Curves to Mesh. To enable the preview mode, click the Enable button at the top right hand side. This starts to show you the preview. At the moment, as the curves are not connected or joined together, you'll see it create a dotted line between the objects, but it will not create a surface. Here's what you do to create the surface. Click the Snap tool, a little magnet at the top, if you click the drop down box right next to this and select Vertex, now when you move a control point, it will automatically snap to the next nearest control point. Join all the control points to the corners in this manner. Once the last one has joined, that's when you will see the magic happen. The magic is that this has interpolated or created a surface based on the shape of the curves. Because this is in preview mode, when you change the control points, the preview will change accordingly. You will find you can add or move additional control points and the preview should automatically update. Once you are happy, to create your mesh, simply press the Create Mesh button at the bottom of the side menu. The add-on can also be used to create a mesh from cross sections. Here, a circle shape is created and then duplicated to create a series of simple shapes scaled at different sizes. The shapes do not have to be the same, nor do they have to be cyclic, but circles are used here for demonstration purposes. Activate the add-on as before in the side panel. Because the tool needs to be in a different conversion mode, the shapes will not at first appear to be connected. There is a drop down box called Conversion Method. Select this drop down box and you will be presented with two options Surface to Mesh and Profiles to Mesh. Switch to Profiles to Mesh. Now you should be able to see a preview of a mesh being created from the curve profiles. This is done by bridging the shapes that are closest to one another. More conversion methods may be created in the future, so your suggestions are welcome. Because the tool is in preview mode, you can quickly create additional shapes and arrange them to change the mesh in real time. Also new in this version, the add-on can now automatically link your patches together. This means you can create more complex surfaces 
by creating a network of patches. Here, the curves are being selected and duplicated on each side and moved to create a larger surface. Using this method of creating patches, you can create much more sophisticated objects, such as a car shown here. This example file is included with the add-on. Here, all the curves are combined into one object, although they can be separate objects if you wish. By pressing Tab to go into edit mode, you can see the control points that make up the curve. By enabling the preview mode as before, you will be able to see the car mesh being generated. Note that the mesh can be mirrored so that you do not have to create the curves twice whilst modeling. As before, moving the control points whilst in preview mode will update the mesh. Another more extreme example is the modeling of a head. This is also included as an example file. Once more, the control points can be mirrored and manipulated in the preview mode. Take a look at the example files to get a feel for how the curves are constructed. Some tips. Selecting Blender's curves and control points can be tricky if you have not done it before. When in edit mode, using the L key whilst hovering over a control point will select all the linked control points and hence the curve. This is useful in more complex curves when you need to pick one out from the rest. Also, bear in mind that the mesh created is a regular blender mesh. This add-on should be used as a complement to and not a replacement for Blender's powerful mesh editing tools. Here, for example, the add-on is used to create the overall shape of a car, but adding details such as headlights is easier with a simple mesh extrusion. Next steps. Now the groundwork has been laid, there will be several upcoming features for the tool. Making the tool's effect animated is often requested, so integration with the animation nodes framework is being looked at. Enhancing the tool's ability to create more sophisticated mesh topology is also on the cards, and creating new conversion methods for curves, such as sweeping curves, has also been suggested. For any questions, suggestions or issues you have, or if you would like to get involved, please do not hesitate to contact Mark Kingsnorth either via his Twitter page or by going to his online Blender Market store where you can see more of his work. Alternatively, subscribe to his channel on YouTube where there are more videos and tutorials to come. Thanks for listening.